Ah, pensions. Good old pensions, eh? <sighs> I guess it's there once we retire, and it's obviously our money for us to live upon um, once we get to an older age. But there's a lot of misconceptions surrounding pensions, to be quite frank with you guys. Like, most people feel that it's this magical black box that you put your money in over time and just magically turns into more money over time. Yeah. But I actually have a better analogy for a pension and it relates it to water. So imagine this big lump of water inside of a bucket, fully enclosed. That's what a pension is like. So the money obviously relates to the water. How much water you get out of that bucket relates to how much pension you get. The only problem is, <laughs> the only outlet point is one little piddly hole, yeah? That's what a pension is like. Now sometimes that little hole may be just about enough to maybe like wet your face. But other times, let's say when you need to take a shower, let's say when you need to swim even worse, let's say when you need to drink a good glass of water, that piddly hole just ain't gonna cut it. This is exactly what a pension can be like at times. In this video I'm gonna discuss exactly what a pension is and a lot of the pitfalls that people fall in to having their pension. Um, it's also a watch this video because it's actually part one to part two, which will be in my next video. Part two is gonna be debating whether it's important to have a pension or just invest your money. So that's a quite interesting topic and I've been waiting to talk about that. So definitely watch this one so you guys can get to the next video. It'll all make sense, it's like a story, but yeah. You, you know, know what you're watching. watching. First off, I need to explain to you guys what a pension is fully. Now, you guys know me and my artistic touch, so I think it's kind of best if I put this on a drawing. Ta-da! Well, very artistic, I know. You don't have to say anything. Anyways, yeah, so as you guys can see, I've got three, like, beautiful drawings here artwork, Picasso. Um, yeah, so what you have to consider when it comes to getting a pension is you, the company, and FAB. What is FAB? Financial advisory body is what I call it, FAB. So yeah, what happens with a pension is you guys actually do this. So the money that comes before you even see it, so let's use pound signs, because I'm in UK. Sorry, euro, sorry, dollars, UK time. But yeah, so you have pounds, that go to this company, so the company you work for, and it just doesn't stop there. What does the company you work for do with it? It combines that pounds with other pounds from other colleagues in your company. So let's say there's 100, so you times 100, well, there'll only be one DS Learning Finance, but yeah, let's say there were 100. So we've got 100 worth of whatever pensions, you, you would say, like big pot of pension. So you can imagine that's quite a lot of money. And so what that company does is it directs it to a financial advisory body. Now, may I add, there are some good financial advisory bodies. There are some bad FAPs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But before I get onto that, I actually want to explain what the company may do before they pass that money on to that fund. What they can do is add a bit of their money to it. So what happens is you've got a lot of companies that have pension benefits. So for example, my company matches whatever amount I put in that, um, that's excessive of the minimum. So that effectively means I've got twice the amount of what I originally put in going to these fabs. So let's say that's you times 100, but what actually happens is the pot of money gets times by two, let's say. Now, don't hold me by this. This is obviously varies so much depending on companies. Some companies do it, some companies don't. Some companies do too much. Um, some companies barely do any, so it really changes. So what you've got to do is make sure that your company actually has a good sort of pension scheme. And that would be a good thing. And so yeah, what happens with the financial advisory bodies, the fabs, is that they can wake up on one side of the bed one day and then wake up on another side of the bed another day. They're completely in charge of your pension. So what they choose to do with that pension 
is highly dependent on how good they are at their role. Now in general, what these fabs like to do is that they like to put your pension in safe investments. So stuff like governmental bonds, stuff like um, trust funds, stuff like um, maybe some even slow burning mutual funds that are deemed safe. That's where they'll put your money in because what they don't want to do is lose your money because obviously that will cause a huge uproar. That's like a, literally a no-no for them. But for them to get that sense of security, that means that they need to compensate for a lack of interest. And that's how it is in the investment world. So the riskier, riskier the game it is you take, the um, the better the interest tends to be, and vice versa, flip the other way around. In this case, we're talking about the other way around. So they just want to put your money in safe investments that will have crappy interest, but at least it tends to be safe. E word tends, not always guaranteed. And ironically enough, this brings me on to my first point which is that you need to monitor what your financial advisory body is doing yeah you need to check it out guys because yeah you can get some good fabs and you can get some crappy fab now i know to normal people pensions and doing that going that extra mile and nobody got time for that but to an investor it's a different story because you know what a mutual fund is you know what a bond is you know what a good investment can be you know the credentials that it requires and you privately invest your money anyway so why don't you monitor this why don't you look at what the fabs are doing it's your money after all so you're definitely entitled to do it even my brother recently looked at his pension scheme and he was shocked to find out what he saw and it was basically that his fab was putting his money into okay let me keep this pg crappy funds crappy investments guys so he had to actually opt out of the pension and now he invests his money privately. So that just speaks for you guys, that just shows you what fabs are. So not necessarily just because they have the title that they're a pension fund manager or the, that they're great or even that their history is great means that they're going to make you money. No, some are actually quite bad and some may even turn bad in that split second. So you really can't predict this thing. That's why you need to really monitor it frequently because it's your money. I know it requires being proactive. I know it requires being persistent. I know it requires going the extra mile, but literally it's your money, guys. When you retire, that is the money you're gonna get. So you're within every right to make sure that that money is being used and put to the maximum um, capability that it can perform at. So don't be shy, guys. Remember, if you don't ask, you won't get. Cool. So now you've got the financial advisory body doing its job properly. Now, the only other thing that, that can influence whether you get a good pension, just from the supply chain, you can see, is not the company, because the company is basically just the middleman. And it's actually an enhancer, as I'll call it, because it takes your money. Well, let me rephrase that. A lot of companies take your money and then add to it. So they're just an enhancer. The only person that can really control it is the fab and you. So we've looked at the fab, so now let's look at you. What can you guys do to, to increase your pension? Well, simple, increase your pension. Don't just give the minimum. This brings me on to my next fact. When you just provide the minimum pension, yeah, you're, you're, you're not going to get a good pension, guys, because the minimum is nowhere near enough and the money to sustain you for the rest of your retirement life is just not enough. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make. They think, oh, the company said that the minimum is this, so that should be all right. No, that's, that ain't gonna last you long, bro. Sis, nah. <laughs> you need to give much more. You need to increase it as time progresses in your working life. When I first saw my fab, he actually said that it can be as high as up to 30% later on in your working life. So the aim is not to just make, because obviously you need money now. If you're my age, you need as much money as possible. So maybe start off as the minimum, but don't stay there, progress forward. It can be up to even 30% later on, because that's when you can actually sit back. You've done stuff, you've bought your houses, you've bought all that, you've achieved all your goals. So maybe that money, a bit more of that money could be contributed towards the pension. Just don't stagnate at the minimum guys, okay? And that's basically the recipe for a good pension, guys. So it's simple. Just follow the, obviously, the beautiful artistic Picasso drawing. And yeah, you guys will be on the right path if you want a decent pension.
I know it's a lot to digest, but ultimately it's your money at the end of your working lifetime. Yeah, when you retire, this is the money you're gonna be relying upon. Hopefully not because you would have invested in other stuff, but majority of the people that are in the UK have a terrible pension people. And this is frightening because majority of those people don't have any other money. They don't have any side hustle. They don't have any side investment. They don't have any like assets but that pension and maybe the house that they live in. So it's a lot to consider and you need to make sure that you're taking the necessary steps to make sure that that pension sustains you if you're gonna get a pension. It's your favorite YouTuber guys, Dami Solari. I talk about stock market investments, property investments, financial management too, giving you guys that consistent content, you know? Before you guys can go about doing whatever you wanna do for the rest of the day, say it with me, like, subscribe and share people. What? DS Learning Finance. Whoa. Bye guys. Whoa. 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 Ha!